Hi, everybody. Um, we are on to a new unit this week. It's actually called um, Unit 5, Linear Functions, which is everything to do with straight lines and things related to straight lines. And today we're going to do Lesson 1, which is called uh, Slope of a Line. And the notes look like this. I'm going to get you to disregard this first page, though, so we can... Forget about this stuff. So just don't worry about all of this on the first page, guys. The lesson starts in the next page. It is true, actually, that homework is called Assignment 1, but we'll get to that later. Okay, so let's go over here. Foundations and Pre-Calculus of Math 10. Slope of a line segment. And so, yes, we are going to talk about the slope of a line segment. <clears throat> and here's a definition. The slope of a line segment is a measure of the steepness of the line segment. Slope is the ratio of rise over the run. Okay, and the rise is the change in vertical height between two endpoints, <clears throat> and the run is the change in horizontal length between two endpoints. Okay, and so as a diagram, it looks like this. Let's say we have a straight line. If you want to take a segment of that line, if you have a couple of endpoints like that, <clears throat> the run is along here, and the rise is the vertical change in distance. Okay, and the slope is the ratio of rise over run. Okay, and you can also go this way, and let's say we have an endpoint and an endpoint. This would be the rise, which would actually be like a negative rise because it's going down, and that's the run. <clears throat> Okay, um, the rise is positive if we count up and negative if we count down. And the run is positive if we count to the right <coughs> and negative if we count left. Okay, and you may see a road sign like this. When you're going down a hill, it might show like a picture of a truck. And then it says something like 6%. That is actually a different way of writing like the slope of the road, how steep the road is. Okay, because 6% means 6 out of 100, rise over run. And what that means is that you have a rise of 6 for a run of 100, whether it's like meters or feet or something like that. Um, or in this case, like a fall of 6 meters for every 100 meters that you're going horizontally. Okay, and it gives you a sense of how steep the road is. Okay, so in class example one, it says, <coughs> Using the following line segments with the given endpoints below, complete the table below. Okay, and so there were supposed to be line segments in here. They are not currently there, and so we'll write them in. The first one was supposed to be right here. Okay, so that's the first line segment. Let's call it AB. And then there's one over here.
which is E, F, and then there's a C, D one as well here. Okay, and so let's start off with line segment A, B. What is the rise? Well, the rise is this piece right here, right? The rise is 2. The run is from the initial point to there. And that is 3 squares. And so the slope is rise over run, 2 thirds. Okay, then let's look at CD. So to go from C to D, we have to go to the right four units. So that's the run. And we have to go up one, two, three, four, five units. So the rise is five. Okay, and so the slope is five over four. <clears throat> and finally for EF, the rise is one, two, three, four units down. So negative four for the rise, and this is going to be for line segment EF. The run is one, two, three squares to the right, so the slope is negative four over three. Okay, so that's a simple calculation for slope. Investigation A is investigating slope of line segments. So given the line segments with endpoints on the graph provided, please complete the chart. Write the slope in simplest form. Okay, and so here is what we did with this. At a starting point here, and then went like that. And so we have this nice extended line. This is A, B, C, D. Actually, you know what? Um, I'm not going to label it like that. We're going to have A, B there. And we are going to have C, D on the end like this. All right, and we are going to start off with line segment AB. And the rise is this distance here. And we're going to actually say that to go from the level that A is at up to B, we'll say that there is an extra point in the middle. Okay, so that's a rise of two units, right? Two spaces. And the run is one, two, three dots to the right. Okay, so the slope of AB is two-thirds. And then we will find the slope of AC. So if we go from A to C, So 
So AC will look like this. And we can count spaces here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So the run is 15. And we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 spaces that way. So the rise is 10. Okay, so the slope of AC, the rise is 10. And the run is 15. And so rise over run, you would have 10 over 15. But in lowest terms, those are both divisible by 5. So in lowest terms, that's 2 thirds. Okay, what's next? How about AD? Or maybe let's try BC first. So to go from B to C, we have to get to that dot right there. The run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The rise is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so the slope of BC is rise 8, run 12, rise over run, 8 over 12. Those are both divisible by 4. 4 into 8 goes 2. 4 into 12 goes 3 times, and we get 2 thirds again. Okay, so you might be able to see the pattern here. Let's try one more. We are going to look at the line segment. Let's see, we did AB, we did AC, we did BC. Let's do the whole large one, A all the way to D. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen for the run. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve for the rise. Okay, so the slope is twelve over eighteen. The rise was 12, the run is 18, slope is 12 over 18, those are both divisible by 6. 6 goes into 12 twice, and it goes into 18 three times, so we get two-thirds. Okay, and so the point of this investigation is, how are the slopes of the line segments related? They are equal. Okay, and it's trying to show this fact that... The slope of a straight line is constant. So when you have a straight line, it has a constant slope that doesn't change. <clears throat> Okay, in investigation B, we are actually going to look at horizontal and vertical slopes and see what we get with that. Okay, so each of the line segments on the grid passes through at least two points. Calculate the slope of each line. So why don't we try this one here. From A all the way to B. And we're going to do EF over here.
Okay, and we'll first talk about line AB, and then we will talk about line EF. And remember, slope is equal to rise over run. Okay, and so if you look at point A and point B, guys, they are at the same level. They're both three units up from the x-axis. So to get from A over to B, there's no rise, is there? There's no movement up. So the rise is zero, but there is a run, right? It has to run over to the right here. It's got to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, zero over eight. How many times does eight go into zero? Zero. Zero divided by eight is zero. And now let's look at EF. Again, they are at the same level. There is no rise to go from E to F. So the rise is zero, but there is a run over to the right. One, two, three, four, five units. Zero over five is equal to zero. So we get a slope of zero. Now let's go over here into grid two and look at vertical lines. Um, if we make a line segment IJ, for example, And then KL, say right here, Let's look at line IJ first of all, and then we will look at KL, and remember that slope is equal to rise over run. So with IJ, the rise is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units up. There is no movement to the left or right though to go from J to I. We don't have to move to the right at all or to the left. So the run is zero. We end up getting seven over zero. Okay, but we cannot divide by zero. Seven divided by zero is not well defined. This is undefined. And KL will get something similar. The rise is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so the rise is 12, but there's a zero run. Don't have to go to the right or left. And 12 divided by zero is undefined. Okay, so we're going to forget about this little comment here, and this, and this, and this, and the point of this is just to show something about horizontal lines and vertical lines. Okay, so horizontal lines have a slope of zero. And vertical lines have an undefined slope. Okay, so that's what's special about um, horizontal and vertical lines. And then, in general, a line which rises from left to right has a positive slope. So if we rise from left to right like this, that is a positive slope. 
and a line which falls from left to right has a negative slope. So as we go left to right and it falls like that, this is a negative slope. Okay, we'll finish off with this class exercise one in our notes. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That is the slope formula. Okay, and the diagram of that would be like this. If you have two points on the line, x1, y1, x2, y2. The way to figure out the rise, like how high you're going up, is you would have to take the second y-coordinate and subtract off the first one. y2 minus y1 is the rise. And actually over here, the run is x2 minus x1. Like so. So this is the rise and this is the run. Okay, so find the slope of the line segment that passes through A, 5, negative 2, and B, 4, negative 7. Okay, so you can make this your x1, y1, and your x2, y2. And so the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 is negative 7 minus y1 is negative 2 x2 is 4 minus x1 is 5. All right, and when you subtract negative integers, we can change it to add the opposite. So it's negative 7 plus 2, which takes us to negative 5. 4 minus 5 is negative 1, and our slope is 5. With this one, the slope is... y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So you've got to be consistent. If we're going to start with this point and say y2 minus y1, 1 minus 1, I have to start at the d point for the x values as well, and I have to go x2 minus x1, so over 5 minus 1. And we end up getting 0 over 4. 0 divided by 4 is 0. So we get a, sl <coughs> Excuse me, a slope of 0 for that one. And this one, the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So here's y2, there's y1, 6 minus 4 divided by x2 minus x1. 3 minus 3, so we end up with 2 divided by 0, which is undefined. All right, number two. The slope of a line segment is 1 over 2, which passes through the point 0, 2, and k, comma, 6. Find the missing coordinate, k. Okay, so we've got slope is equal to 1 over 2. From the slope formula, we would get y2 minus y1, 6 minus 2, over x2 minus x1, k minus 0, which ends up being 4 over k. All right, and so we get these two expressions for the slope. We know that the slope is equal to 1 half, but it's also equal to 4 over k. So we can say 
Therefore, 4 over k equals 1 over 2, and solve this for k. One fraction equal to another, we can cross multiply. 2 times 4 is 8, k times 1 is k, so we end up with k equals 8. And finally, number three, the slope of a line segment is 1, which passes through the point 0, negative 2, and k, comma, 3. Find the missing coordinate k. So the slope is equal to 1. From slope formula, we can do this. Here's y2, and there's y1. 3 minus negative 2, and then x2 is k minus x1 is 0. So we end up getting 3 minus negative 2 is like 3 plus positive 2, so we get 5 over k. And if you wanted to try to draw a little picture of this just to get some perspective, 0, negative 2 is here, and k dot 3 is possibly like that. It has to be up 3 because the y is 3. We don't know what the x is. Okay, but we do know that the slope of the line has to be 1. So you've got to be able to go 1 up, 1 to the right, 1 up, 1 to the right, 1 up, 1 to the right, and so on, right? Okay, so to figure out what k is, the slope is 5 over k, and it's also equal to 1. So we can say, therefore, 5 over k equals 1. 1 is sitting over a 1, we can cross multiply, 5 equals k. k equals 5. That seems reasonable from the diagram. Alright everybody, so... Um, That is lesson one of unit five linear functions. It's just sort of a review and introduction with slope. Again, um, your homework is going to be a handout called assignment one. And of course I will attach it attached to the email, the first email that I send you of the week. And assignment number one looks like this. Okay, unit five, assignment one, the slope formula. This will be as an attachment in the email, and you can print that off and hopefully complete that. Okay, and I will send you an answer key for that later in the week, and we can just continue working through unit five on linear functions. Alright everybody, I will talk to you soon.